Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do this morning in the cabin series is just talk a little bit about cast iron type wood stoves. And that's what I'm using in the cabin. And they're very easy to use, they're very easy to maintain, but you need to understand how they operate to make them work as effectively as they can in your cabin. Stay with me. Okay, so let's talk about the stove itself. And this is just one that I traded for. You can pick these up pretty cheap. You can buy them new, places like Tractor Supply. But I picked this one up in trade for right around 100 bucks, something like that. Now, the way these stoves operate is you have to understand it's just like any other fire. To burn effectively, it needs draft. It needs air from the bottom and air current to draft up. And you have two ways of controlling that on a wood stove like this. You have a draft gate here at the bottom on this stove. Let's see if I can turn this camera down just a little bit right here. And when you open that up, you can hear it start to draft really heavy. That and when you close it down, it stops. So if you're trying to get a fire started, you want to open that draft gate up. Now that's also controlled by the damper back here in the back. There is a rod right here that rotates and it's got a handle on the other side to rotate it and basically that is just a flat piece of metal with holes in it that tilts back and forth and that opens up the draft to pull more draft through the stove. So you've really got two ways of controlling that. So what you really want to do when you start the stove from cold is you want to slide this draft gate open and you want to have this draft here, your damper, open as well. That allows the maximum amount of air into that fire to start it. And of course you're going to use smaller material for starting it just like you would a normal fire. Let's put some more wood on here now. We're getting a good draft in there. Now we can put some bigger, what I would consider fuel wood on there. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And once this thing gets burning and you've got this stove full of wood, you've got a good bed of coals built up in there, you're going to want to close these draft vents down a little bit or close them most of the way down and then just adjust your damper so that your firewood lasts longer and you're conserving fuel and it will also heat better that way. You know, these things are made of cast iron, so they're basically a giant thermal mass heater. Now, there's a couple other things you should know about this stove as far as how they work. You've got a couple of lids up here on the top of the stove, and most of them come with a handle so that you can put it in there and remove that lid. And that allows you to cook on top of the stove with open flame. Now, what I've done with mine is... If you don't have a pot big enough to sit over that, like, and I do have plenty of them, but let's just say I wanted to use this teapot on here. It's pretty much going to sit inside that hole. Anything any smaller than that wouldn't fit very well, and this thing's going to tilt and all kinds of stuff in there. So what I did was I went to a scrap yard and found an old junk stove that had a couple of the grates on top of it. And I put that right on top of that open hole and put my skillet or my pot or my kettle on top of that. And that gives me a little bit more versatility of use with this stove to cook with it inside. And this one has two of those holes and it comes with a lifter to lift that out. Okay? And I keep that stored up here in the top. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you about this wood stove that makes it just awesome. It's got a lid here as well that you can lift up and you can remove that all the way off to the side because it's hinged and it's got a hinge on it back here in the back and then again I just got this right out of the scrapyard I can put a grill on top of this a grill rack and I can cook meat, steaks, what have you, right on top of the stove. 
as long as I've got the fire stoked up properly. Now the fire is really low right now. We didn't put much fuel in there. So you haven't got enough heat right here to cook anything very quickly. But if you put some more in there, put some more wood in there, you can cook on top of this thing, no problem. So it just gives you that much more versatility in a stove like this. And then that just slides right back over the top, just like that. Close her up for the night. So that's pretty much how this thing works as far as how the stove operates. And obviously you need the same things to start this that you need for any other fire. You need tinder, kindling, and fuel. Pretty much the same size requirements. You're going to need something highly flammable to get it started. You don't want to use resin-laden wood too much in these stoves because it's really going to get your stove pipes and stuff filthy and you're going to have to clean them out more often if you do that. But softer woods are going to be better for starting the fire, and harder woods are going to be better for maintaining the fire. No different than a normal campfire. So your ashes, your hickories, your oaks, those are your long-burning hardwoods. And then to start the fire, you want things like poplar and aspen. Okay. You can hear it drafting really well right now. I'll shut up for a minute so you can hear it. And if we open it up... You'll see in the back, the back there, it's really cooking good. What the, main, the goal really here is to be able to get this fire the length of this stove. If the fire is only back here, then you're really not efficiently heating this thermal mass heater. You really want that fire as long as the stove is. So when you're cutting your pieces that you're going to use for fuel wood, cut them the length of the inside of that stove if you can, because that'll give you better heat overall within the cabin area. Okay, now let's talk about a couple things that you're going to need to use this stove. Obviously you're going to need the things that you need to light fires with, just like you do in the woods. But there's a couple other things that you may want. One of them is some kind of a steel poker or rod. You can forge one, you can buy one. You can get one from a fireplace shop. It doesn't matter. But a steel poker to move that stuff around, like I said, to rake coals toward the front to get your fire spread out the way you want it and all those types of things is always good. I keep a couple things beside the stove. I keep an ash bucket beside the stove that I can put kindling in and I can also put ash in out of the bottom of the stove. Ash is nothing but insulation. So you want to get it out of the stove. So once you've burned it, you want some kind of a shovel that you can shovel that ash out into an ash bucket. Then you can take that ash and you can repurpose it for other things around the cabin. We've talked about the use of ashes up to and including making soap lots of times if they're hardwood ashes. The other thing I would suggest you have is this air bellows. Sometimes in the morning it's tough to get a, a fire going again that you've had burning all night in there. You're down to embers. You put some wood in there. If you've got this extra air to pump to it, you can get some flame going and then you're ready to rock and roll and you control everything else with the dampers and the air gate and things like that. Okay, So those are just the things that I would have with the stove. Probably the last thing I keep around in here, around the stove, is just this firewood caddy. And it's just a canvas satchel that I can split firewood outside on a splitting stump, bring it inside here and put it beside the stove. And then I keep some split wood in there underneath the overhang on the porch as well to keep it out of the weather. So that's the simplicity of the stove. Now when you set this thing up, there's a couple things you want to remember, okay? You can see that we have a fire resistant board behind the stove. We have another one on the ground below the stove because you're going to get hot embers. Things are going to get hot around it and you're going to have issues if you don't. The other thing you've got to worry about I'm trying to adjust this camera as I talk, kind of difficult. Where this thing goes through the wall, you're going to need an insert for this that's got asbestos or some kind of a batting in it. To keep it from burning because you build up a lot of heat right between your wall studs right there from this pipe going out because this pipe gets really really hot so you're going to need a couple inserts in there and i've got the one insert that goes attached to the cabin wall and then i have another insert here that's silver that the pipe actually goes through that just sits inside this opening and that's just another insulator to keep heat away from the wall itself so you're going to remember, have to remember to have those things available to you as well because you don't just want to set this stove up in your cabin and then, you know, catch the cabin on fire. That's, that's never going to be a good thing.
So once you get this thing going and the fire is starting to creep back here to the back where it needs to be, you can put a little bit more fuel in there, stack that thing up, close the thing down. And if you want to heat the cabin or you want to cook or whatever, you know, close your damper down a little bit, close up your vent gate a little bit so it's not drafting so hard and burning up your fuel. And it'll burn for a good long time. If you load this wood stove up with a good hardwood like ash, the thing will burn virtually, I want to say six, seven hours before you're going to have to really stoke it hard again. So you can get a pretty good night's sleep in a cabin like this with a stove going as long as you fill it up and maintain, it, maintain the fire itself to begin with and get everything set up right before you turn in. All right, guys, so that was just a quick look today at how to use a wood stove, how to set it up, kind of some of the things that you might need around the cabin to maintain the fire in the wood stove and care for the wood stove. You're going to want to take this thing about, you know, every two years and paint it with a high temperature black paint you can get at any hardware store. If any rust accumulates on it, just take a wire brush and scrub that surface rust off before you paint it. But this stove, um, this particular one here, I've had for, I want to say, six years now. And I'm sure the guy I got it from had it before because it was used when I bought it, so I don't know how many years he used it. But these old cast iron stoves will last a long, long time as long as you maintain and take care of them.